Welcome guys, today I'll explain an action drama war film called Dunkirk, spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The film begins with six people walking and a lot of paper flying around. When one of the people caught the paper, it turned out that the paper contained the words to surrender to the German troops. Surrendering was the same as being alive. Then they began to be fired upon by enemy troops and only one man survived. The man's name was Tommy. Tommy also met the Allied troops who took refuge in the fort and told him to go to the beach. When Tommy arrived at the beach, he saw so many soldiers waiting to be evacuated. Then Tommy meets a man named Gibson who is burying the bodies of dead British soldiers. Gibson is a French soldier. His goal was to bury the body and then retrieve and put on his uniform. They went to the line to queue up to board the ship. At that moment the Germans came into the air, bombing them with bombs through the air so that several soldiers and not a few were injured. Tommy and Gibson, who survived the air raid, helped the wounded soldier and lifted him over the embankment to a British army ship that was about to set sail. In the middle of the road we are shown there are French soldiers who try to get into the line to join the ship, but they are blocked by British soldiers, because the ship was only for British soldiers. Actually, Gibson's goal in wearing the British army uniform was to quickly evacuate from the Dunker coast because the French ship had not arrived. When Tommy and Gibson arrived on the British ship they were ordered to get off the ship immediately because the ship was full, but Gibson invited Tommy to ask under the embankment. At that moment, their troops began to bombard the embankment and hit the British airship, which resulted in the ship being destroyed. Tommy and Gibson encounter soldiers who jump off the ship before the ship sinks and they save it. The man's name was Alex. Fortunately from the incident of the sinking of the evacuation ship, there were still many soldiers who survived. Commander Bolton ordered them to climb the embankment and build another ship. Finally they were successfully evacuated using a small boat, then boarded a larger ship that contained food and drink in it. But Gibson did not go to the deck of the ship, he chose to stay outside the ship where the air outside was very cold, but the decision he made saved his life and that of his friends. Until finally the ship they were riding was shot by a torpedo by the enemy, then the ship began to sink. The soldiers who were in the ship were trapped, the water started to enter, but luckily Gibson who was outside opened the door and saved his friends. Tommy and Alex tried to get into the lifeboat that had deep sound in it, but the lifeboat was full and had overturned twice. The surviving soldiers returned to Dunkirk Beach to await their next ride, followed by Tommy and Alex who floated then, pulled by a lifeboat to shore. The next day Tommy, Gibson, and Alex were back on shore waiting for another boat to arrive. They just stared at the sight that I think is very heart-wrenching. We're seeing some soldiers chose to end their lives by entering the big waves, maybe because they were so tormented by circumstances that forced them to keep returning to the beach and not being saved. Several soldiers of Royal Engineers who were waiting for the ship to arrive decided to build a dock using trucks to face the tide. They know the flow of water has changed scene from the number of bodies of soldiers who died in the ocean returning to the shoreline. Tommy, Gibson, and Alex see and follow the British Highland soldiers who are making their way to the stranded ship. It's likely to come back afloat when the tide comes. The scene moves to the conversation of Commander Bolton and Colonel Winnant. Commander Bolton informs that the British Empire is asking for help from the citizens, who have ships to help with the evacuation at Dunkirk. Then the scene returns to the Highland troops and Tommy and his friends. They find the ship empty without a crew who may have left because they are in enemy territory. Without thinking they all got into the boat and waited for the tide. After waiting for some time they heard the sound of footsteps right on the boat. Tommy managed to catch the man. It turned out to be a merchant as well as a ship owner from the Netherlands. He came to help with the evacuation. But suddenly the enemy started shooting at their ship and made a hole in the ship, followed by the seawater starting to rise and then entering the ship. The enemy knew that there was someone in the ship and kept shooting at him which made the ship more and more holes until the water entered very quickly. The water made the ship unable to float and had to reduce the load. Panicked Alex forces Gibson to get off the ship, but Gibson refuses. Alex thought that Gibson was a German spy because he had been silent all this time. Because he was forced to finally admit that he was actually a French soldier. They all force Gibson to get off the ship immediately, except for Tommy who continues to convince him that this is not the right thing to do because it was Gibson who had saved them all along. After a long debate, the ship suddenly got a balance. Then it started to float, but the enemy continued to shoot at the ship until it made a hole so large that it was impossible to plug it. Their only choice is to leave the ship, and this is where Gibson's journey ends. He was trapped in a ship that made him unsalvageable. The scene shows the man running to the men's pier is George. He went to see Mr. Dawson and his son Peter. Mr. Dawson was given an hour to unload and make a life vest as his ship was about to be taken over by the Navy then head to Dunkirk to monitor the evacuation of soldiers trapped there. But Mr. Dawson refused he asked George to remove the mooring rope. 
George without thinking suddenly boarded the ship without knowing where Mr. Dawson was going. George thought Mr. Dawson was going to France, but he was wrong. The real goal was to go to the battlefield, then George said he would be useful. Arriving on the high seas they met a British fighter plane and found the soldiers on board the ship that had capsized. Peter saves him using a rope and throws him at the man. The man survived and he looked scared while on the boat. After a long journey, there was a puff of smoke that headed right at Dunkirk Beach. Upon learning of Mr. Dawson's destination to Dunkirk the man refused and asked Mr. Dawson to change direction, but Mr. Dawson would still go to Dunkirk until finally there was a fight that made Georgie's head seriously injured by falling from the deck of the ship and George's life was not saved. Fortunately, the man came to his senses and followed Mr. Dawson to Dunkirk. The scene opens which shows three British Spitfire aircraft, namely 4 day one piloted by Ferrier, 40s two piloted by Collins and 40s three the commander. They met the first enemy plane, then fought and managed to bring down one enemy plane, as well as 40s three the captain who was also shot down. After they learned the captain had fallen Ferrier and Collins decided to fly higher so as not to meet the enemy troops, even though it required more fuel. On their way to Dunkirk, Ferrier and Collins encounter a second enemy fighter jet, which shows enemy aircraft trying to bomb a British warship. Collins also managed to shoot down the enemy plane, but Collins was also shot and was forced to land in the middle of the sea. In this part, all the plots join in which Peter and Mr. Dawson also managed to save Collins and lead him to Dunkirk. Meanwhile, Tommy and Alex managed to get out of the sinking ship earlier, trying to get to a bigger ship. But unfortunately, this ship they were on was also bombed by enemy aircraft, and then the ship sank. At the same time, Mr. Dawson's ship arrived and managed to save Tommy and Alex and the other soldiers. Because the ship was full, Mr. Dawson changed the direction of the ship to return to mainland England. The small ship also arrived with its owner and managed to evacuate hundreds of thousands of British troops. But the enemy air force came back and wanted to attack them, until Ferrier shot down the plane, which made the evacuation go smoothly. Ferrier running out of fuel lands his plane into enemy territory, which gets himself captured. Tommy, Alex and Mr. Dawson and other soldiers arrive in England. They boarded the train to go home. On the train Tommy and Alex read the newspaper. It turns out that the success of the Dynamo operation has inspired the UK and even the world. George was in the newspapers and was appointed Dunkirk hero, and then the film was finished.